an ancient text that shapes millions of lives, yet remains silent on some of our most private questions. Today, we're diving into one of those very topics. The Bible and its perspective on something that's rarely discussed oral sex. This might challenge some of what you think you know about love, intimacy, and faith. We'll be unpacking what the Bible does and doesn't say, and how Christians through the centuries have navigated these questions. So, if you're ready to explore a topic that's often kept behind closed doors, keep watching. And hey, if you're into content that digs deep into faith and relationships, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. To start, it's important to acknowledge something significant about the Bible's treatment of intimate topics. The Bible, as many of us know, offers guidance on a wide range of subjects, including relationships, morality, and even marriage, but it doesn't mention oral sex specifically. There's no verse or passage that directly addresses it, which has left some room for different interpretations. In the absence of a clear biblical mandate, Christians are often encouraged to apply broader principles of love, respect, and mutual commitment when approaching questions about intimate acts in marriage. Biblical silence on a specific issue doesn't necessarily indicate approval or disapproval. Rather, it places a responsibility on believers to approach it with discernment. The Apostle Paul speaks to this in Romans 14 verse 14 where he says, I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean of itself. But to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. This principle has been interpreted to mean that in matters where the Bible is silent, individuals have the freedom to act according to their conscience and relationship with God, especially when it involves personal matters between spouses. While the Bible doesn't specifically address oral sex, it provides principles that many Christians believe apply to all aspects of marital intimacy. Let's look at three key principles that help frame the conversation about what's appropriate in a marriage. One flesh union. In Genesis 2 verse 24, we read, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. This concept of one flesh isn't just about physical union. It symbolizes a unique and profound connection between a husband and wife. The marriage relationship is meant to reflect love, unity, and exclusivity. In this view, intimacy isn't only about physical pleasure, it's an expression of unity. Many Christians interpret this one flesh principle to mean that spouses are free to explore intimacy in ways that strengthen their bond and respect their relationship as sacred. Mutual consent and sacrifice. Another principle comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 3 to 5. He writes, The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. This passage emphasizes mutual consent and the idea that intimacy should be selfless, where each partner seeks the other's well-being and happiness. This principle is often interpreted to mean that within marriage, as long as both partners are comfortable. And in agreement, they have the freedom to express love and affection in ways that work for them. Respect for the body as a temple. In 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 to 20, Paul tells believers, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? This principle calls Christians to treat their bodies and those of others with honor and respect. When it comes to intimacy in marriage, this means that each partner should act in ways that show care and honor for their spouse, maintaining a sense of reverence and respect. Because the Bible doesn't explicitly address oral sex, different Christian traditions have developed various interpretations on the topic. Let's look at how some of the major Christian denominations approach intimate expressions within marriage. Catholic View the Catholic Church has specific teachings on marital intimacy that emphasize both the unitive, and procreative purposes of sexual acts. According to Catholic doctrine, any act of intimacy between a husband and wife should be open to the possibility of procreation, meaning it should ideally lead to or be part of natural intercourse. This perspective is based on the Church's teachings that marriage is intended to be open to life. Oral sex is generally accepted in the Catholic Church as long as it is part of foreplay that leads to natural intercourse.
Protestant perspectives on intimacy within marriage can vary widely. As Protestantism encompasses many denominations, each with its own emphasis. However, many Protestant traditions emphasize the importance of love, unity, and mutual consent in marriage. Since oral sex is not explicitly forbidden in Scripture, many Protestants believe that married couples have the freedom to decide what works for them, as long as both partners agree. Intimate acts like oral sex are often seen as a matter of personal conviction and conscience. Orthodox Christianity generally encourages a conservative approach to marital intimacy. While the Orthodox tradition doesn't specifically prohibit oral sex, it teaches that intimacy should reflect love, humility, and respect. Orthodox Christians are encouraged to see marriage as a path to holiness, focusing on a relationship that glorifies God. The Orthodox Church tends to leave personal choices in marital intimacy to the couple's discretion encouraging them to ensure that any acts strengthen their unity and align with their faith. Beyond denominational views, many Christians use broader biblical principles and ethics to evaluate questions of intimacy. Here are a few key ethical considerations. The Golden Rule Jesus teaches us in Matthew 7 verse 12, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This golden rule encourages respect, kindness, and mutual care within marriage when it comes to intimate acts. This principle suggests that partners should consider each other's comfort and boundaries. 1. Always prioritizing their spouse's well-being. It also means that acts should not feel selfish or degrading, but should contribute to a healthy and loving connection. 2. Purity of heart. Another principle that comes up is purity of heart and intention. In Matthew 5, verse 8, Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Purity of heart doesn't necessarily mean avoiding all intimacy, but it encourages Christians to act with loving and selfless intentions rather than treating their spouse as an object. It encourages couples to approach each other with respect, always aiming to build each other up in love, avoiding lustful objectification. 3. Avoiding lust and objectification. In Ephesians 5, verse 25, husbands are instructed to love their wives as Christ loved the church, which is a selfless, sacrificial love. This teaching can be applied to intimacy by encouraging spouses to see each other as equals, not as objects for pleasure. Instead, it calls for intimacy that enhances mutual respect and deepens the bond. For those navigating this topic within their own marriages, here are some practical tips that can help foster a healthy, God-centered approach to intimacy. Open communication. Start by having an open and honest conversation with your spouse. Discuss your comfort levels, any boundaries you might have, and what you both need to feel connected and loved. Many couples find that simply talking openly about intimacy can bring them closer together and make them more comfortable expressing themselves. Prayer and reflection. If you're struggling with questions or uncertainty, Prayer can be a powerful tool. Pray together or individually, asking God for wisdom and guidance on how to honor each other and Him within your marriage. Reflection on Scripture can also help guide your thoughts and actions in this area. Respect boundaries. Mutual respect is foundational in marriage. If one partner feels uncomfortable with an aspect of intimacy, it's important to respect that boundary. Honoring each other's boundaries and preferences reflects the love and sacrifice that Christ modeled, helping build trust and respect. Seek Christian counseling, if needed, for couples who are unsure or facing challenges, Christian. Counseling can provide valuable insights. Counselors trained in biblical principles can offer guidance and help you work through these issues with a perspective grounded in faith. In closing, the Bible may not give us explicit instructions on every detail of marital intimacy, but it provides powerful guiding principles on love, respect, and unity. Approaching questions like these with a heart focused on honoring God and building each other up can lead to a relationship that reflects the beauty of God's design for marriage. Remember, each marriage is a unique journey between you, your spouse, and God. By focusing on love, respect, and open communication, you can create a bond that is both fulfilling and rooted in faith. If you enjoyed this discussion, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this.
Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below and let me know what other topics you'd like to explore. Thank you for watching, and may God bless you and your marriage. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation, it is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus.